and welcome back to the logical Indian I'm Apoor. And over time, uh, working with the government, the public-private partnership model is evolving and we are very committed uh, towards becoming a part of uh, India's developmental needs and contributing to it. And most important, all this in the last, last couple of years, uh, we work every year um, in our 25 plant locations impacting more than 1.3 million people. Right. So uh, I was going through your CSR report and uh, let me congratulate you for such a detailed report outlining your work. Um, Pernodika India definitely has done a lot, you know, across its footprint. Um, what I would like to understand from you is the vision that you might have for, you know, for the communities, meaning to say why are communities important? So communities essentially grant us the social license to operate. Uh, and it is with this thought that we've completely crafted our CSR report and thank you for your kind words on our report. Uh, it gives us and, and gives us a lot of motivation to bring in greater transparency of our work and of course uh, increase our footprint and better our programs uh, when it comes to impact. Uh, when we look at social license to operate, um, over time uh, the India environment, uh, if you look at the socio-economic or the human development context, uh, most of our communities are based in rural India and most of the development needs are all, always here. And this is where uh, communities become extremely essential when it comes to partnering on India's developmental needs. And that is where all our programs, uh, whatever roadmap we create, communities remain essentially the ones that will tread this journey with us. Uh, if you look at the, the, the next decade, um, even the Sustainable Development Goals till 2030, uh, all these uh, look at a, a vision where communities um, uh, you know, need to work at a very, very uh, grassroots level with corporates. Uh, our group strategy is good times from good place and uh, terroir and communities are at the core of it. And at Pernurika India, uh, we talk about transforming communities and accelerating local development. And local is with context to our operating plant environment. And that is why, uh, you know, the local environment and local communities and transforming them, empowering them with developmental alternatives remains the core of our purpose. Right, um, that's extremely interesting and I see a certain sense of urgency and action in your vision. Uh, how would you, uh, you know, accelerate local development and also what is your approach to being inclusive beyond business? So if we uh, look at uh, transforming communities and accelerating local development, and I also talked about how communities grant us the social license to operate. Most important is this should lead to us becoming a partner of choice for the communities. And that, that's not easy. Uh, for us, um, we have six core transformation areas. Uh, the first one is uh, that we safeguard human rights, dignity, and well-being. 
and how do we do that uh, by trying to er eradicate poverty at a community level working with them uh, to provide them access to quality health care and nutrition and uh, one of the most important ones uh, not not the last uh, is also uh, ensuring uh, quality education for youth and children so that that's number one number two is fostering a water resilience or a water development model uh, it's extremely essential that the concept of water or uh, making water more useful for the communities uh, becomes understood by them and that is why uh, we talk about uh, safeguarding availability, quantity and quality of water for the communities itself. Uh, the third one is, is about being a business for nature. And when we talk about being a business for nature, uh, it is about safeguarding India's rich uh, natural ecosystems, landscapes and water systems. The fourth one is the buzzword today which is diversity and inclusion okay and when we look at diversity and inclusion the most important aspect uh, is uh, supporting all all uh, communities and genders and also persons with different abilities with healthcare with uh, education and with opportunities um, either through an incubation platform the fifth one is nurturing the social innovation space. And if you look at the government agenda, uh, it is about augmenting social purpose organizations, either through incubation support, which could be even funds, it could be uh, mentoring, it could be knowledge, uh, or providing a platform for that. And if we look at the, the last point, it is uh, our strong commitment uh, towards responsible consumption of alcohol. And in these core six transformation areas, uh, you know, there are a number of things which we've achieved, which is all part of our CSR report. Uh, Ponorika India is water uh, positive, which means going beyond operations to the communities. Uh, we'd like to know more about what you're doing on that front and also the scale of it. Okay, uh, water positive, it's not mathematical here, okay. Uh, many people just look at it as withdrawal to recharge. Uh, we don't look at it that way. Uh, it's all about going beyond the mathematics into an ecosystem level. And when we look at the ecosystem, uh, it is about uh, stewarding watershed level collective action. And that's priority for us. Uh, when we work with communities, the most essential part when it comes to development uh, as water remains the crux of all development, is making them understand the importance of water, making them understand how water can become more useful for them. Uh, the day the community understands the importance of water, how to harness it and how to use it in a better manner is where the development starts. And that is where uh, the next phase is about making the community understand the concept of embedded water. Uh, we are looking at it from an operational level at a water positivity, but the day we, day we start looking at embedded water is where uh, even society, consumers, community, all of them become more conscious about water. Uh, at uh, Ponorika India and all our programs, uh, we first work very closely with the community, trying to make them understand the stages of uh, the importance of water and the methods of harnessing it. And this is exactly where uh, the, the, uh, the water positivity, about 2,600 million litres of water capacity that we've created comes into play. And that we've done with more than 1,500 water structures, 1,500 plus. And these are either on groundwater recharge or uh, they are on surface water or direct recharge. And uh, it's extremely essential that it doesn't stop here, but gets into agricultural practices where you get into drips, micro sprinklers, etc., so that there is greater um, or better water use efficiency. And this is where it leads to cost saving. And if you look at wall as a program, it starts going beyond uh, water in terms of harnessing water, using it for agricultural purposes, and what you 
reap as benefits in terms of harnessing water and using it efficiently in your agricultural practices leads to better livelihood enhancements. And once the community understands this part, gets in the the rest of the needs of healthcare, education, all of it. So that is where water starts, you know, building the entire community ecosystem. Right. So, Mr. Shashidhar, we'll get to talking about wall. But before that, you spoke about water uh, development, right? Uh, how do you look at the dynamics and you know importance of water changing within uh, the communities, and what is the role of Pernorica India towards it? So, right. I mean, water development, as I was talking, is about making water more useful for the community, uh, and that's because water is at the heart of uh, a community's needs. Uh, in a shared ecosystem, and I keep using the word ecosystem because we have a plant and the community lives there. Uh, the most important aspect is uh, learning to use shared resources. And this is where uh, the community understanding uh, the requirements of water conservation and efficient water use practices is important. Uh, making water more useful for the community. How do you harness it? Uh, how do you use it better? Uh, what's the saving in cost? What advantages does it uh, lead to in the local ecosystem or local watersheds? All this is extremely important and they have long-term outcome-based benefits for us. Uh, if we look at the work we do uh, in WAL, uh, we work with more than 21,000 farmers, uh, indirectly also impacting uh, 1,85,000 uh, marginal small farmers and even women farmers um, all this through the water programs uh, and most of them reaping the benefits of harnessing water using it efficiently saving costs getting into better livelihood options so that that's the way we're getting into developing a better uh, livelihood or a status uh, with uh, the use of water. So um, your uh, program uh, wall which is water agriculture and livelihood looks at uh, you know something which is beyond just water and water development really focusing on you know say agri -lively, uh, livelihood or women empowerment or even social entrepreneurship. So what is the role of wall uh, you know how does wall locate itself within the communities? Yeah so I keep saying water is the crux of all development. Uh, let's layer it uh, at the base is uh, understanding uh, how do you harness water. So there are many communities like the Saharia tribe uh, in our programs. Uh, they are farmers, but because they have not understood the power of harnessing water, they go on as bonded labor. Uh, once they learn how to harness water, they get into the next crop. Uh, and that is where the development starts. So wall starts working at a base level of understanding water, then getting into better water use practices. And lastly, the benefit of getting into a, a livelihood space for it. So we every year we work with more than 7,900 farmers uh, in our wall program. Uh, it also leads to sustainable agriculture, sustainable farming, uh, nano orchards, uh, different ways of cropping, uh, how do you hedge uh, market spaces, better land use, uh, so land use efficiency. So it's all about fostering a water resilient system and going beyond just the power of harnessing water, uh, but improving livelihoods. Um, we've seen practices where the disposable incomes of farmers in our programs have risen by 25 to 40 percent um, with about a 30 to 50 thousand uh, disposable increase uh, per year. When it comes to water, there are certain cohorts which are highly affected, especially women. So if you take drinking water itself, uh, areas which have water stress and non-availability of drinking water, women have to fetch water uh, walking great distances. Then even when it comes to, uh, even when it comes to the programs um, of agriculture, it's extremely important because most of the time goes working in the fields. The day they realize this, this particular cohort of women who have been affected due to the lack of water, their livelihoods and status changes. And then they start becoming part of women producer organizations, self-help groups, which have learned to use water, 
but they are now learning uh, better skills. So there is an empowerment uh, outcome which starts coming into play. And, and that's how wall starts working at various levels. And lastly, once you teach them water and better livelihoods, it also dovetails into a space where they have requirements towards healthcare, education, and you start working with the community on trying to develop their uh, you know, needs, uh, fulfill them, uh, basis, whatever else is needed because they've, they've already started moving up in their livelihood space. So that's how wall works. Okay. So you you kind of spoke about you know being business for nature and biodiversity, especially um, you know in the context of water. Now a lot of businesses, a lot of companies look at um, look at biodiversity as something which is related to environment or ecosystem. Um, what is what is how does Pernorica India sort of define being business for nature? Uh, I think nature is everyone's business. Everyone's business. I don't think today, uh, you know, anyone can say uh, nature is not my, you know, uh, not related to me. Um, when we talk about being a business for nature, uh, the entire triple bottom line concept of, uh, you know, people, planet and profits comes extremely into play. Uh, so when it comes to creating shared values of Potter and Kramer model, uh, it's important that we uh, develop the communities uh, who are dependent on us. At the same time, we protect the environment in which we are operating. And with all this talk and the uh, urgency on climate action, climate change, it's extremely important that most of the companies become businesses for nature. Uh, keeping that in mind at Ponorica India, uh, we have programs uh, across most of our locations. Uh, but you know, if, if we look at a big program, then uh, we work in the elephant corridor uh, corridors in, in Assam, we are trying to protect the natural habitat of the elephants uh, so that it has a long-term impact on the Brahmaputra riverine ecosystem because elephants, uh, it, it's an elephant corridor and also reduce negative human elephant interactions there. So that's at a larger ecosystem level. But then if you look at it at a lower uh, you know, space at, at a farmer or a community level, then most important is uh, converting degraded land into arable land, uh, which you can call them as biodiversity plots. So when they were degraded, there was no biodiversity. Then either you put in various orchards, uh, plants, etc. Then you're creating a micro ecosystem, which over time will enhance the biodiversity of that, that local ecosystem. So we, we have more than 400 acres coming into our programs every year and about 4,000 acres totally uh, into converting degraded land into arable land. And that is how biodiversity takes a very strong impetus uh, and our entire roadmap is all towards creating this long-term uh, you know, sequestration and benefit to the ecosystem. Thank you so much, Mr. Shashidhar, for your time today. Uh, this was very insightful. Thank you so much, Apurva. Uh, it's been wonderful talking to you and sharing uh, all our programs with which we do with so much of pride. Uh, it's been wonderful uh, sharing that with you. Thank you so much.